recording. Perfect. All right, here we go. So we're going to divide m to the second power plus 9m plus 20 divided by m plus 4. Remember, our second fraction, the denominator, or I'm sorry, second fraction, our second polynomial is a binomial, which means we need to use long division here. So I'm going to set it up first. Then I'm going to write my steps. And my steps don't change. They're always the same. Give myself a little bit more space here. There we go. Zoom out. So I'm just running out my steps real quick. All right, so here are my steps. And yes, Amy, thank you so much for the compliment. It is extremely organized. I agree with you. Okay. The key to math, everybody. I, I, I will say it until I am dead. The key is just keeping things organized. Right neat. Amy was so nice to unmute herself and said, uh, boy, Mr. Flo, that's, that's very well written. And I agree it is. All right. Now, here comes the fun part. Step one, we take the first term in the dividend which is m to the second power. And we're going to divide it by the first term in my divisor, which is the letter m. That's going to give me m to the first. I take that result and I write it directly above. So step one is done. Step two, we're going to take that letter m that we just found and we're going to multiply it by m plus four. That's going to give us <clears throat> m to the second plus 4m and make sure you put it in parentheses is that okay are everybody okay so far now we take that m to the second plus 4m quantity we're going to write it directly below our dividend and put a subtraction sign out front how do i know i'm on the right path there's something that will always happen and it's going to happen right here. How do I know I'm correct? Exactly. Very good, Megan. Megan H. I'll be more specific. Megan H. Notice right here in the very first, m to the second minus m to the second is zero. So the only thing that we really need to be concerned with is 9m minus 4m. Pretty easy. What's 9 minus 4? Five. 5m. Very good. Now, we drop down our next term. And the entire process does what? The entire process repeats. All right, so if I were writing this down on my notebook, all right, and I know I probably said I, I, as a professor, I failed you. I should have said this at the very start. In your notebook, I know traditionally we write like this. Maybe you should put your notebook in landscape mode because now you have more space to go left and right. Because what I'm going to be doing right here with my steps one, two, and three is I'm going to erase. But if you put your notebook in landscape mode, then what you can do is just draw another line and just repeat the steps over and over again. Does that make sense? So I failed you. I'm sorry. I'll remind you on the next problem. Good. Can we chalk it up as a Monday? It was a Monday. I made the mistake. Isn't that a song? Isn't that a song? Like an 80s song? I'll think of it. What?
Galileo really wants it. Galileo really likes polynomial division. But I can't let him do it. All right, here we go. Start over again. Dividend is 5M. Divisor is M. That gives me positive 5. So I'm going to write plus 5 in the numerator. Okay? Any questions so far? Now, I multiply 5 times M plus 4. And that's going to give me 5M plus 20. Make sure you put it in parentheses. I'm going to transpose that over to my problem with a subtraction sign out front. And 5M minus 5M is 0. And 20 minus 20 is also 0. So, M to the second plus 9M plus 20 all over M plus 4 equals M plus 5. Does that make sense, everyone? Now, here's a great question. How do we check ourselves? Here. Off to the right. If I take 15 and divide it into 13, I get the answer 2 and 3 fifths. How do I check myself to make sure I'm correct? Multiply 2 and 3 fifths by 5. I wouldn't do that. What I would do is this. I would say 2 times 5 plus 3. 2 times 5 is 10 plus 3 is 13. Isn't that your dividend? Yes or no? So how would you check yourself here? And if you're correct, what should you get? So let's see. M times M is M to the second. N times 4 is plus 4M. 5 times M is plus 5M. 4 times 5 is plus 20. And that's going to give me M squared plus 9M plus 20. Excellent job. Wesley, good, 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 good use of your brain. You must have woke up early today. Had a good breakfast. I knew I was in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we know how to check ourselves. To check, and I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna write just a very general over here. And this is why it's so important to know the names of things. To check quotient times divisor plus, and you gotta remember your remainder. That's how you check yourself. Quotient times divisor plus remainder. And this has to equal your dividend. So as long as that checks out, as the kids say, good job. You thought I was going to say something cool, didn't you? I pulled a flip mode on you. Ha. All right. Now, here's something hopefully we've noticed. Oh, I did forget to say good morning to somebody. So I'm going to ask this person right now. Austin, good morning. Morning. Austin, I'm, I'm going to zoom out and I want you to look at these two examples that, that, that I did. So let's see here. There we go. That's about, that's about as good as I'm going to get it. So the first answer for the first problem, and this is what we did the other day, is right here. And then here's our second answer. Now, there is something that both of these have in common. Do you see what it is? Okay, I like that. Anything else? Would you like a hint, my friend? Sure. All right, here's your hint. I just highlighted it in blue. So these two problems in yellow have something in common. And the blue is something entirely different. Oh, the two problems don't have any 
Ah, the two problems do not have any remainders. So I guess, Austin, I need to show you an example where we get what? A remainder. There you go. I like the way you think. So here we go. Find the quotient for 3x to the second power minus 16x minus 12, all divided by x minus 6. Okay? So, oh, sorry? I would put it in landscape mode, yes. That way you have more room to write. Okay? Good morning. What are you doing? Oh, you're gonna aren't you going for a walk with mommy? Oh, how about that? What a lucky dog. So here we go. We're gonna set up our problem. I'll put the x minus six, my divisor outside, my dividend, three x squared, minus sixteen x minus twelve goes inside. I'm gonna draw my line, write out my steps. Step one, dividend over divisor. Step two is our multiplication step. All right, so I'll just put multiply. And then step three, we got to subtract. So, like I said, sometimes, you know, you want to follow along with me. Other times, you may just want to wait until I'm done with, like, one whole uh, one whole portion of this algorithm and then write it down. It's up to you. But here we go. Step one. Dividend, 3x to the second, divided by divisor, x. When I simplify using my quotient rule, I get 3x. So, I'm going to put that directly above. Now I'm going to multiply 3x times x minus 6. That's going to give me 3x squared minus 18x. And remember, we put that in parentheses. Now I just take that and transpose it over to my problem. Okay. Okay. Step three is our subtraction step. If you want to, write it out. 3x to the second minus 3x to the second and negative 16x minus negative 18x. 3x to the second minus 3x to the second is zero. And then negative 16x minus negative 18x is 2x. Because remember... A negative and a negative make it positive. So it's going to be 16 plus 18. I'm sorry, negative 16 plus 18. So I write 2x down here. Now we take a deep breath. Does everybody agree with my steps? All right. So I drop down the negative 12. The entire process repeats now. Do you need me to wait while you write this down or, or is it okay for me to erase? All right, I'm going to erase. Nobody's saying anything, so I'll just erase. For those of you writing, this is where you want to put that line and then start over your steps again. Okay, so step one, dividend is 2x over x. Well, that gives me a positive 2. I multiply 2 times x minus 6. Well, that's going to give me 2x minus 12 in parentheses. Bye. I transpose that. And remember, 
write out the subtraction. 2x minus 2x equals 0. Negative 12 minus a negative 12. Well, how did this work out? Because this is supposed to have a remainder. Oh, I know what I did wrong. Never mind. Just keep going. Negative 12 plus 12 equals 0. So we just came up with an answer that didn't have a remainder. So I did something here. I factored it in my head real quick. <laughs> we'll learn that next chapter. All right. Are there any questions with this answer? 3x plus 2. All right. So next one. Now, I guarantee you this one has a remainder because I'm actually looking at it right now. All right? Megan H., you good? You're probably like, what an idiot. <laughs> so we're going to divide x to the third minus x to the squared plus x plus 4. Divided by x plus 1. And because I love technology, I'm going to take advantage of it right now. There we go. All right. Now, here's what I, here's what I will do on this problem. I'm going to speed up a little bit. Okay? We know our steps. We understand the process. I'm just going to speed up a little bit. So let's write it nice and neat. We'll set it up. I'll write my steps out beautifully. There's step one. Step two is multiply. And step three, subtract. All right, and like I said, I'm going to speed up here a little bit. So, dividend, x to the third over x equals x to the second. I take that, put it in my quotient. I also take x to the second, I multiply it, times x plus 1, or the quantity x plus 1. That's going to give me x to the third plus x to the second. Remember, put it in parentheses and write it over underneath your problem. Now it's subtraction time. x to the third minus x to the third is zero. Negative x to the second minus x to the second is negative two x to the second. Does everybody agree with that? All right, so we write that directly underneath, and then we drop down our next term, which is just going to be the plus x. Now I just erase. Everything starts over. Dividend is going to be negative 2x to the second divided by x. Well, that's going to give me negative 2x. So I take that and I put it in my quotient. I also take negative 2x and I'm going to multiply by the quantity x plus 1. And that's going to give me negative 2x to the second minus 2x. Make sure you put it in parentheses. And write it directly underneath your problem. Now, like I said, you know if you're doing this correctly because this will always happen. When I go to subtract, I have negative 2x to the second minus a negative 2x to the second, which is really 
double the negative, so we get that plus. So this is zero. That's how you know you're on the right path. Okay? Also, we have x <clears throat> minus negative 2x. Remember, you got a double negative, so it makes it positive. So 1 plus 2 is 3. So this is going to be 3x. Now we drop down our 4. Process repeats all over again. See, you just keep doing these three steps until you get all the way down to the bottom. Right, Amy? I can't see you, so you have to speak. Yeah. Thank you very much. So I just erase. My dividend is 3x. My divisor is x. So this turns out to be a positive 3. I will take 3 and multiply it times x plus 1 to give me 3x plus 3 in parentheses. I take that and write it directly underneath my problem. And, not, and the last move is I just subtract. 3x minus 3x is 0. And 4 minus 3 is 1. And this is the first time we get a remainder. So the only thing we got to do is learn how to write the answer. And here's how you write the answer. I like to start off by writing the problem. You don't necessarily have to do this. But I like to. So the quantity x to the x cubed minus x squared plus x plus 4 divided by the quantity x plus 1 is equal to your quotient x to the second minus 2x plus 3. Now, you always write this no matter what. Plus, and then the remainder over your divisor. So what I'm going to do underneath is write the word quotient plus your remainder divided by the divisor. So for us, it's going to be x, x to the second minus 2x plus 3 plus 1 divided by x plus 1. How are we looking? Pretty good? All right. Dividing polynomials from a 30,000 foot view is just tedious. It is. And it's really easy. I mean, it is so easy to make the smallest mistake that will have profound implications later on. I personally think if you make a mistake, it'll be in this step right here. It'll be in the subtraction step. And, it's, and the reason why you're going to make a mistake is right there. If you don't write it out, you might forget that you have a double negative back to back, which makes it positive. So the best way to try to avoid that mistake is to write things out. Are there any questions? All right. So before we move on to another problem, now that we understand how to divide polynomials, we know how to write answers for them. I'm going to give you the criteria. The first thing you got to make sure. No matter what your polynomials are in. descending degree meaning the highest degree is first and then it descends after that so that's the first criteria the second criteria no missing 
terms. All right, so now what we can do is, like I said, we can do the very general cases here. All right, we could, we could just do big general cases. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. So we're, if we wanted to divide 8a to the third power plus 27 divided by 2a plus 3. Now we got to be concerned, okay? Because we have this criteria that we have to worry about. All right? So before I can really divide, I need to set up my problem. So just do me a favor. Just watch for a second. I'll give you a minute to write it down. Because I'm going to write it down a very special way. So notice that my divisor is 2a plus 3. It's in descending order, meaning the a is raised to the first power. So the next term would be my constant. That's great. And I'm not missing any terms. However, in my dividend, I am missing terms. I am missing a squared and a to the first. So, before we can even divide, you have to write them in. Otherwise, you're going to get everything all mixed up, and you're going to get the problem wrong. Does that make sense? And the reason why we have to fill that in comes, or it stems directly from step one. Because we know, in step one, we have to take our dividend which is 8a to the third, and divided by 2a, which is our first term in the divisor. And that gives me 4a to the second power. Notice that first step, you already introduce a to the second. So if you didn't write 0a to the second in, where would you put it? Does that make sense? So it's all about keeping everything nice and organized. So I would put the 4a to the second directly above. That is the number one mistake students will make. And you will make it on your test if you don't fill in the blanks. So anytime you want to put a missing term in, just write plus zero and the missing term, whatever that exponent happens to be. Once you get the problem set up correctly, you can change your address to 123 Easy Street because it's just exactly what we just did. So step two, we're going to multiply. 4a to the second times the quantity 2a plus 3. So that's going to give me 8a to the third. plus 12a to the second. I put that in parentheses and I write it directly beneath my problem. <clears throat> also, look in step two, you got to subtract 12a to the second power. If you didn't write that missing term in, how, where would you put that? Right, Amy? Coming back to you because I know you appreciate how organized I am. Am I picking on you too much today? All right, well, I'll pick on someone else. Ganga. Ganga, she sent me an email loving how organized I am. She, it was, Ganga, here's what the email said. Professor Flo, how do you maintain such excellent organizational skills? And I said, one word. Practice. That was it. So, step three. Remember, write it out. Subtraction. 8a to the third minus 8a to the third equals 0. Also, 0a to the second minus 12a to the second equals negative 12a to the second. 
So I write that directly beneath and drop down my next term. Does that make sense, everyone? Because I don't want to move fast. This is what I think is one of the most boring classes for a student to sit through. But for me, it's really exciting because I like doing problems. And this is all right in my wheelhouse. <clears throat> all right. Sorry, had to take a drink of water. Process repeats all over again. So let me get my eraser out. All right. <clears throat> Negative 12a to the second divided by 2a is going to give me negative 6a. So I write that in my quotient. I'm going to multiply negative 6a times the quantity 2a plus 3. That's going to give me negative 12a squared minus 18a. I put that in parentheses and I write it in my problem. How are we looking so far? Pretty good. So now I just subtract negative 12a to the second minus a negative 12a to the second is really negative 12 plus 12, which is zero. And then I have 0a minus negative 18a, which is really 0 plus 18. So it's going to be positive 18a. Then I drop down my 27. Process repeats all over again. So I erase. Don't you just love... How tedious this is, Megan D. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> I could definitely find better ways to spend my Monday afternoon. But for now, this is the hoop that we must jump through. So our dividend, 18A over 2A, which is going to be 9 18 divided by 2 is 9. A divided by A is A to the 0, which is 1. So this is just a 9. So plus 9. So all right, 9 times 2A plus 3. That's going to give me 18A plus 27. Boy, isn't that a beautiful thing what's happening here? Put it in parentheses. Subtract. 18A minus 18A is 0. And 27 minus 27 is 0. So your answer is 4a to the second minus 6a plus 9. This is by far the most difficult problem that you will see. You will have only one similar, similar to this on a test. So I'll give you like an easy one, a nice home run. And then I'm going to give you one of these. I will tell you this right now on your exam, which is coming up very soon. When is it? Excellent. It's going to be on Monday. All right. A week from today. It'll be on Monday. You will have one long division. That's relatively simple. And one long division, that's like this one right here. Okay? Is there any way to flip it to one side and then turn it again on Monday? Or am I biology class? No, because I'm not going to have any time. Okay. All right? I'm sorry, Leah. I wish I could. And normally, you know, I'm cool with stuff like that. But I, I'm, I, I, I just can't. All right? Are there any questions with this? All right. I want to give you one to do on your own. All right. Let me give you one to do here.
All right, are we ready? Who got an answer? No remainder? No. All right. Question. Is my problem set up correctly? Megan D, you're shaking your head no. Explain why. You have to write your missing term in. Good. Got to write the missing term in. Excellent. Thank you. So I'm going to do that in red. So it's going to be plus 0x squared. Plus 3x plus 14. Now does it look better? I agree. All right. Oh, let's see here. S Austin. Step one. Can you help me out with step one? So you take the twin or just the divisor. So that would be... Um, one sec. What does that equal? X squared. All right, good. Sydney, now that I have this X squared, I know I have to put it in my quotient, but what else do I do with it? You have to multiply X squared by three. You have to multiply that by X plus three. Good. So that's going to give me, <clears throat> excuse me, X to the third plus two X to the second. I know I need to put them in parentheses, move it underneath my problem, and then I got to subtract. Leah, what is x to the third minus x to the third? Good. Also, Leah, what is 0x to the second minus 2x to the second? What does that equal? So what's Go with your gut. So is it positive or negative? Is it positive? Uh, zero minus two is what? Oh wait, it would be negative. There you go. That's okay. That's why. That's why I said go with your gut. Now I drop down the next term. All right, process repeats. So let me erase. Jacob, help me out with step one. What do I write? Uh-oh. <laughs> what do I write for step one? Oh. <laughs> so you write for step one? Yep. So so we just got negative two x to the second minus three x or plus three x. So I just erased the process repeats all over again. Yeah. So what do I write for step one? You take three x plus fourteen or no? No. Somebody help somebody help Jacob out. Go ahead, Wesley. All right. And good. Negative 2x. So I write that in my quotient. Ganga, what do I do with that negative 2x? Oh, boy. Oh, not yet. I already did that. Oh, wait. Did you say divide or did you say multiply? I'm sorry. No. Other one. Multiply. So we're going to take negative 2x and we're going to multiply it by x plus 2. And that's going to give me negative 2x to the second minus 4x. How's everybody looking with that so far? Good? All right. Hallie, what do I do with a negative 2x squared minus 4x? All right. So I put it in parentheses and subtract.
So step three, now we subtract. Amy, can you tell me what to subtract? Three X minus negative four X. All right. So what is negative two X squared minus a negative two X squared equal? Anyone? Zero. Good. What is what is three X minus negative four X? Seven X. Excellent. Because remember, two negatives make a positive. So this is going to be seven X now. I drop down the 14 process repeats all over again. So let me erase. Actually, I'll erase from top to bottom. I should be doing that. All right. Gavin, help me out with step one. What do I write? Excellent. 7x <laughs> over x. All right. Now, uh, let's see. Brianna, what is 7x divided by x? What does that equal? Seven. Love it. So I put plus 7 in my quotient. Dawn, what do I do with this 7 now? Good. And what am I multiplying by? You're absolutely correct. What goes inside the parentheses? Oh, be careful. X plus. There you go. You're okay. You're okay. I you're, I'm, listen, you got X plus a number. If you would have said a smiley face, then I got problems. <laughs> but you're good to go. So, 7 times x is 7x. 7 times 2 is plus 14. All right. Craig, what do I do with the uh, quantity 7x plus 14? Perfect. So, I write it directly underneath. And I subtract. 7x minus 7x, Mr. Float, well, that's 0. And 14 minus 14, Mr. Float, well, that's 0 as well. So I get a remainder of 0. So what just happened there? Did I don't know. All my stuff just disappeared. Maybe if I hit Control-Z. All right. So now it's back. But now I put a 0. Don't disappear on me. Good. So I came up with x squared minus 2x plus 7. And Dylan, I think you gave us your answer. And you got x squared minus 2x plus 7 also. Fantastic job. I'm not erasing anything. I'm dropping the mic. I'm walking off stage. And 